Hello everybody, how are you doing? And welcome to today's video. In today's video, we are going to talk about GRC tools. And specifically, I want to walk you through Diligent Highbond. It's a totally amazing tool. But before we get into Diligent Highbond, let's talk about GRC tools in general. What are GRC tools used for? So for any one of you, if you've watched my prior videos, you know I train on IT audit and compliance. And the reality is that when you perform IT audit and compliance assessments or tests, you do need to document your work somewhere. And you have companies that still use the manual methods, so they may still use Word, Excel, SharePoint, and things like that. But more and more, you'll see more mature companies are actually using tools, um, GRC tools. So you have examples like RSA Archer, you have ServiceNow, you have MetricStream, and you have Teammate. And the one I love right now is Diligent Highbond. All these tools are designed to help organizations keep track of their GRC and audit assessments. So the way the tools work, they are already pre-designed in a lot of ways to match what most organizations will need for audit and compliance. And what organizations then do is perform some limited customization and ultimately, they're using the tool to document their audit and compliance efforts, all right? So that's what GRC tools are used for. In today's video, I want to talk a little bit more about Diligent Highbond. This is a tool that some of you might be familiar with their older name. So if you're familiar with ACL, that's what they used to be called, they rebranded to Diligent. And I remember using ACL a few years ago, actually several years ago, um, more for the analytics side of things, but now they have a full blown audit and compliance suite. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. This is what we are using in the program right now. So students in my program have options um, to get access to diligent high bond. And this tool guys, it's being used by a lot of top level companies. I'm going to add on this screen here somewhere, some of the companies that are using Diligent Highbond. So knowledge of this tool will really set you apart because you are using tools being used by Fortune 1000 companies. All right, so let's dive in and do a quick demo because I'm really excited to show you this tool. It is so intuitive. So let's get started. So on the screen now, you should see how to log into Diligent Highbond, right? If you had access to a tool like this, or to this tool, this will be where you would log in. And then the next thing that you'll do is put your username and password. I've done that already. And this is what the dashboard looks like. So depending on the package that whatever company you're working in um, has, you may see different things. But this base package that we use in the program primarily is used for audits and compliance. And we also can use it for risk assessments. So when you go in here, projects, that's where you'll click to really get into the projects. And I've done this already. And you'll see here, I have a few sample ones that um, we are currently working with in the program. Um, they can be renamed different things. I won't go too much in depth into how to create the projects, but essentially every audit engagement can be a project here, right? So each audit engagement that someone needs to perform will be listed here or should be listed here for the organization to track. And then let's go into this one. You see the project that we just clicked on? Um, this one is specific to IT General Controls SOX testing. If you're not familiar with what SOX or IT General Controls are, you can check out other videos in this channel. They'll walk, um, they'll walk you through those terms. But if you walk through those videos again, let me step back a bit. One of the things that I've covered in some of the videos I've shared are the steps of an IT audit, right? And at a high level, we have audit planning, field work, and reporting. And when you look in this tool, one of the reasons I love it so much is it's so intuitive, right? So you see planning, field work, and results, which is essentially what you will use for reporting. So it makes it so easy to see and to understand where you, uh, what you're doing as the auditor and how you need to document your work. So obviously in the planning tab, you'll feel all the information related to planning. Then there's a field work tab. 
And the fieldwork tab, the way it works here is it lists the different process areas. And for each one of them, you can go there, do overview, for example. And let's say we're looking at logical access. And for logical access, you can see here, it goes into more detail where you can put in the information on the overview of the control, what needs to be done, everything is down there. Um, the walkthroughs can be documented in here, right? So when you do your narratives, you have them in there. Um, and then the risk and control matrix that has all the controls and the risks um, that are being addressed by this particular area being tested. And then you have your test of design um, here. So for each control, you are able to document your test of design. It needs to be signed off by someone on the audit team. Again, if you don't know what test of design is, I believe I have some videos on this channel that go over that. And you can see here, there's an option for you to note whether it was designed appropriately or not. And then um, you can click test plan here, or we'll just click test plan down here. It takes us to the same place. And this has the testing procedures that you want to perform for your test of operating effectiveness. And so this has the procedures, what you need to do. And then the last one here, testing, which is again, the same as the one on top. Here we have the test of operating effectiveness results. So this is where you do your test, uh, document your testing results, what you did, and then also you're able to note whether the control was operating effectively or not. And there's a lot of other things down here that I won't go into in this video. So again, if you look at Diligent High Bond, I love it, it's very intuitive. It's just a really great way to document results of your audit and compliance efforts. And here I just showed you a sample audit plan, right, of audit engagement that we're documenting. You can also use this for compliance efforts. You can use it for risk assessments, like third-party risk assessments, where you're getting um, questionnaires to vendors to complete. So this is a very robust GRC tool. And I just wanted to share a little bit of this here with you today, because I want you to understand that as you go into the IT audit and compliance field, things will not necessarily be manual. Most companies are more mature. They are using GRC tools like Archer, ServiceNow, Teammate, and like I just showed you, Diligent High Bond. And the goal is to make sure that all this information, right, that's been gathered during audit and compliance efforts are being documented in the tool. And one added benefit of doing that is companies can use that for data analytics. It's when you have information in a tool, it's easier to run reports on high risk areas, um, areas that the company wants, company wants to focus on. Um, your risk assessment scores can easily be generated, you know, using calculations. So overall, having a well, you know, defined, robust GRC tool really makes things easier for audit and compliance teams because not only does it make their work easier, it makes making sense of the results of the work easier as well. All right, so hopefully you learned something here today. If you want um, a more detailed training on Diligent High Bond, comment down below, let me know. Um, but I just wanted to give you an overview here so that you'll be able to see what a GRC tool looks like. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.